private function complete handler lowercase c capital H complete handler and we're going to be listening for an event of the event data type and we're going to return a void data type braces press enter a couple times so let's start creating those shapes bear or bar bar <laughs> bar bar uh, it's going to be of the sprite data type it is equal to a new sprite and we are going to access its line style property in the graphics class. So do bar dot graphics dot line style on the line style method, and we're going to be able to give it five pixels and a red color. So zero x ff and then four zeros. And now it's got color, but we need to have a starting point for this line. So let's go ahead and determine what that'll be. Do bar dot graphics dot move to and then we'll pass it a point on the stage, uh, say an x value of 200 and a y value of 100. That'll be the starting point of the line. We now need an ending point, so do bar.graphics.line2 and we'll go about 100 pixels across. It'll be a horizontal line, so we'll give it the same y value. And that should allow us to have a nice little line going across the stage now. But one last thing, we need to add it. So add child, parentheses, do bar. Add bar as a child to the stage. So now when we test our movie, we should have a bar going across. And we do, and the music is still playing. So let's continue. Uh, the other portion of this um, function was the creation of a small blue circle that had kind of served as our pause button. So let me type that in comments really quick. Pause button. And we'll go ahead and create a variable named circle. It'll be a sprite and equal to a new sprite. So we got that taken care of. Now do circle.graphics.drawcircle. Okay, and in the parentheses of the uh, draw circle method, we'll do 215, 200. That's its x and y position, and then we need to pass its radius. Um, it, we'll we'll do uh, we'll do 30 for this one. And that means oh, let me put that. Make sure that's in the parentheses. And then we'll pass it its radius, and that'll allow us to draw a circle to the stage. Now, before we can even start drawing the circle, I didn't include this portion, but we need to give it a fill before we can start actually drawing it out. So do circle.graphics.begin fill, and what should we color it? Let's make it blue, so 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, ff. And last but not least, we'll do circle.graphics.end fill. And we should be good to go. Don't forget to add it to the stage. Add child circle. And now we should have a circle across the stage as well as a playhead or play bar or progress bar, whatever you want to call it. So now that the shapes have been added to the stage, we need to go ahead and add event listeners to each of those shapes. Um, and we're going to do that by adding a mouse event dot click and running click handler once um, once the bars actually uh, been drawn out. So do bar dot add event listener mouse event dot click. We're going to run click handler when we detect a click. We're going to do the same thing for circle. Uh, put it right before the add child statement. I'll just copy and paste. So we do circle dot add event listener and the circle is going to kind of serve as our pause button. So we're going to run the play pause function. Now, of course, before we can test this, we need to go ahead and create those functions and tell them what we want them to do. So let's go ahead and start with click handler. We're going to create private function click handler. We're going to be listening for a mouse event. No, yeah, uh, mouse event. No, event of the mouse event data type, excuse me. And we're going to be returning a void data type curly brace enter. Now remember the bar is going to serve as kind of like a timeline for the uh, user to determine at what point uh, in the song we want to uh, listen to. And we can do that by setting position, one of those numeric values we had talked about earlier, equal to event dot local x, meaning the place on the bar that the user has actually clicked. But before we can actually use this value as a location on the bar, we need to set it equal to a percentage. Because the bar, the length of the bar isn't always going to be equal to the length of the song. In fact, it probably will never be. So we're going to pass, 
we're going to round up position with the math.round method and we're going to subtract its distance from the left side of the stage to give us a more accurate representation. Now remember we set this line at 200 for its starting point so we're going to want to subtract that value to give us um, an accurate portrayal of where it really really is on the actual line. And last but not least we need to set it set Q equal to percent divided by 100 this is really important and then we're gonna multiply it by sound dot length now wherever the user clicks on the bar it should accurate accurately represent um, a position on the song you know and no matter what size the bar is you'd have to change some values if you change the size of the bar of course but it's really easy to figure out with just a little bit of math now before we can go to a different spot on the song we need to stop the sound that's currently playing so do channel dot stop and then what we're going to do is set channel equal to sound.play and at what position do we want it to play at? We're going to pass it Q which is going to be the new position, the, the position on the bar that the user has actually clicked. Now we need to go ahead and create the play pause function for that circle so let me just do this really quick, copy and paste that looks like I had an extra curly brace there, let me go ahead and delete that and we'll start a new function and this, let me add that last curly brace, just copy and paste that really quick. This function will be called, called play pause. And it's still a mouse event, so we'll leave that all the same. Now, for the actual play pause function to uh, run the way we want it to, uh, what we need to do is determine whether or not the song is actually playing. So we'll use that is playing value, that Boolean value we had created earlier to determine what to do. Uh, so we'll do if parentheses put is playing in between so if playing is true what we'll want to do is set the pause point that 0.00, .00 equal to channel dot position the point in the song um, that this, the song is actually uh, at uh, this will return the position that the song is actually at kind of in the form of a, in the form of a time that we can use to stop and then restart it at the point uh, we, we paused it at now in order to uh, once we've stopped it, how do we start it again? In order to do that, we need to put in an else if statement, then another curly brace, and <clears throat> what we'll do is saying, say that if not playing, exclamation point is playing, uh, if, if, if is playing is equal to false, what we'll want to do is set channel equal to sound.play and at what point do we want it to play at? We want it to play at pause point, the point we had paused it at, of course. And that's that's the same logic that goes with MP3 players, DVDs, etc. We pause it at a certain position, we want to be able to start it back at that position. Now, because we're doing this, we need to reset that Boolean value to true because it is going to be playing again once we um once we start it back up from its pause point. So go ahead and save your file. Okay, and now we should be able to go ahead and test the movie uh, with all of its current, uh, all of its new updated functionality. But there, there's actually one spot I left out. When we're pausing the actual song, we need to set is playing equal to false, so it'll be able to pick off, pick up back at the point um, that it left off.